it's Bob from TNT. I'm going to try to speak up on a little horse today. It's TNT Tuesday. Uh, last week we alluded to <coughs> TNT Technical Tuesday. So um, today we're going to go over uh, rebuilding of our suspension joints. Mason was just kind of introing under our old XJ. Um, it's changed hands a few times over the years and it's in for some maintenance. And probably what we're going to find, we just got it on lift, is for purposes of TV, I have an old one here, but this is the ends of our suspension joints, right? It's a summit machine flex joint. You can see it's pretty grungy and gross and neglected and this is just one of our old takeoff ones, but we sold this Jeep about six years ago, and I'm quite certain it hasn't been touched since. Um, <laughs> I drove it this morning. It still drives pretty decent. You know, it's got a few little rattles and clunks, but that's kind of an XJ thing too. So, um, so I just want to, once you get, if you're going to do maintenance, come on. Oh, I should put it in place. easier if it's connected to the controller. <laughs> Not a lot of leverage. I forgot my first step. So they don't come apart, right? Because Jam nut. they have a set screw in them. <laughs> Thought I helped myself out by prepping, but I didn't. So you gotta take set screw out. That's why it's in there, so they can't loosen. That screw comes out. Then, come on. I'll do this. All sorted so it fits in the tool. difference between these joints and say a Johnny joint um, our joints have a very fine thread I think it's 32 pitch thread um, adjustable spanner so you can set preload um, the snap ring ones kind of is what it is Corrosion in there, huh? Tight fit. I should get this for the job. Give me a hammer. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So once you get all the parts out, you can see inside of here is just normal daily gunk and gook. A little brake clean, parts cleaner, whatever. Wash that. You want to take your races. Um, these are actually the old style races. This joint's been around a while. Um, we'll open the, the, for those of you that want, we do have a full rebuild kit. And buy all the pieces individually or they come as a full kit. So, talking with Jolene over the years, um, 
that was, I think that's a Gen 2 race. Um, notice that they're black. Um, that was a, and Jolene will have to correct me if I'm wrong, but HD, HDPE, high density? No, 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 that ain't right. Um, it was an oil impregnated, there's a code for it, oil impregnated. These are great races, they worked well. Um, she recently has switched to this race. And you can see the spiral machined grooves in the face that are not on this one. So that was one of the things we came up with. Um, and if you mic them, it's hard to see it. But these new, new machined races are technically a little thinner. So what happens, and I'll put an old with a new so you can see it. That's inside your joint, right? So these old races damn near touched. They were really hard to get grease in. So she thinned these up a touch. So now you get, if I can hold it or not, you get a little gap, right? So it makes them easier to grease and these grease channels actually spiral the grease out and around the ball. So Jolene's always making improvements. We've made some suggestions over the years. Thank you for listening. Uh, we've used Jolene's joints for, you know, we've been in business 15 years come January. We've probably been using her joints for 14 of the 15. Um, if you have one of these older kits, which some of our XJ stuff, that was the first thing we ever built was XJ stuff. Um, one thing you'll find and you'll want to call and get an upgrade um, those old joints had this washer right you would you put a, um, a spiral lock not a snap ring but it was a spiral so you screw that down in acted like a snap ring and then drop this washer pin so all the pressure was against that snap ring um, on bigger jeeps like this one there's a lot of force, a lot of leverage, you're wheeling it harder, you're whatever. They could pop that snap ring and then the whole joint would get loose. So one of the, I'll clean this so you can see it, one of the discussions Jolene and I had over the years was to do away with that snap ring and actually machine that ledge right into the joint. So right here, I don't know if you can see that or not. So she starts with a thicker ID or thin, smaller ID, thicker wall tubing so that she can machine this ledge right into the housing, which eliminates the snap ring, eliminates another point of failure. The washer drops right in and is seated against that ledge. So it makes assembly simpler for us and for you, the consumer. So if you still have an old joint that has the snap rings in them, we have, have them wrapped, ready to go. They can be replaced, screw one off, screw one on. This obviously is a stretch end. See the difference? Um, we have these for all of our suspension components. If you have a, a arm, control arm, a track bar that has the joint welded to it, Obviously can't screw it off, screw it back on. Um, please call Chuck or Mary, myself. You can send that piece, that whole control arm, that track bar, that whatever, you can send it back in. We have a fixture, we can put your part in our jig. We can go in, we can cut that old housing off. We can update it to the new housing, uh, weld it all back up, send it back to you. It's usually a four or five day turnaround. Um, if you're, some of our old track bars had that snap ring and the track bars are probably the most common to pop that snap ring out. So if you've got a track bar and you want it, want it rebuilt to the latest and greatest, send it to us, we'll fix it up for you. Um, at a minimal charge, basically the charge of the new joint. Um, it'll come back all greased, ready to rock and roll for you. All you do is install it. So for maintenance, so say this was the end of your control arm there in the Jeep. You can either take the arm out of the Jeep. Typically, I just drop one end out of its mount, 
work on it right in house. For me, it's easier, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, you want to clean your old braces. Um, and you kind of want to do this before you call and order parts because there's no sense in buying parts because typically you don't need them. These don't wear out. Um, but clean it real well and you'll see a little, yeah, I still got schmutz in there, but I mean, what you're looking for is gouges, deformities, whatever. I would run this race. There's nothing wrong with this race. Um, I mean, it's got a little deformity here down at the very bottom, but I'd clean it, re-grease it. So if you cleaned and greased, what we've found over the years, that's the grease we use in our joints. I put it in every joint we service, whether it's ours, Curry's, Rock Crawlers, whatever. I found that this grease over the last 15 or 20 years um, really does the job on these. Now, you may call and ask what that manufacturer recommends, um, but for Summit Machine Joints, that is the grease we use. So you clean it all off. It's pretty straightforward. And you're just cleaning stuff. You know, use a little brake clean if you have to. Parts washer, whatever you got. Um, and I'm not going to go all the way through this because we'll be here for the entire episode. But, <laughs> you know, clean it up. Assembly is reverse order. Drop the washer in. Press the race. Clean your ball. Um, the ball is probably the most critical thing to look at. And this one... I can feel rolling it through the rag is trashed, but it's one of our setup joints and we beat on it and do all kinds of stupid things to it. So I would expect it to be beat up. Where you want to look is right here. Make sure there's no bad wear. The chrome, there was some of these back in the early day that were only single chrome treated. The chrome comes off of them. Rubicon Express joints are notorious for chrome coming off of them. Um, Jolene's been hard chroming these for as long as I can remember. You really don't have a chrome separation problem if they're maintained, meaning they're greased, um, they're not submerged in water. I know that's unavoidable for some of you around the country, um, which what, that's what you're looking for is the chrome flaking or rust, because that is abrasive, will grind your races up. So if you need new balls, However you want to take that, you can call us, we can ship you some in a box. Maybe your wife's got them in her purse, I don't know. But if you need them, we got them. So the race goes in, grease it, use a little, little acid brush, put a little, little grease on it. And really guys, a little goes a long way. Um, and I'll get to that when we get under the Jeep. Put a little grease on it, drop the ball in, clean your other race, put that in push all of that down and it should go fairly lightly I mean you know you might have to tap it with a I mean we built some tools a piece of tube that goes over here because we're assembling them in production and we can just bang them out with our arbor press but see it it'll drop right in when you get everything square I've just pushed it in with my hands um, Julie's watching now too whatever I did with the spanner there is a right side and a wrong side to the spanner Jolene made it idiot proof she puts her logo, her little Summit machine, whatever it is, oval and some dealy bobs. You should see that. The logo goes out. If the logo goes in, the taper on the race is wrong and it won't have the flexibility that it's supposed to. So logo goes out. These you gotta be careful with because they're really fine thread, so don't cross thread them. Get them started. As you notice, there are no power tools on this table. <laughs> Don't grab your half inch impact and start running this home because chances are it will never, ever, ever come apart again. Once you get it, you just kind of got to feel it. There it goes. Once it's started, okay, take your tool, and these are also available from Jolene, and get it apart. Here it comes. Gonna need a torque wrench. So we've been building these joints for, like I said, almost 14 years. Um, 
whatever you got for a torque wrench, set it to 30 foot pounds. I'm sorry, I gotta cheat because I can't see it. Right there. This is why I say it's easier to do this service in the vehicle because now you gotta hold and fight all of this. You don't really want to put it in a vise, you'll damage the powder coating, but do what you gotta do. So I'm just gonna simulate. I'm getting closer. 32 teeth, they're pretty fine thread. Um, so you get it there, and there's my set screw. This is a JK third link upper end, so the set screw's on the end. So you basically just want to bring that around and click. I don't know if you heard that, but there it is, click. <laughs> Till that cavity lines up with the hole where you can put set screw in. Um, I've had people red lock tight these. I've had them do all kinds of crazy stuff. Don't do that. It is such a small set screw and I probably lost it already. Um, yeah, it's gone, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty common. Oh, there it is still on the. So it's a pretty small set screw. It is a, three thirty second wrench so you can't get it tight enough to hurt it because you're going to either break your wrench or you're going to strip your strip the socket out of the set screw don't red loctite them they don't have to be it can't go anywhere just tiny just screw it in and if the set screw starts binding up quit readjust your spanner it's kind of like tightening a wheel bearing. Bring it around, click, then look at the hole. If, you, if you're off a little bit, go tighter, not looser. Continue to tighten it until that lines up. And when it's all lined up, that screw goes right in by hand. It bottoms out in the retainer, done. There you go, a rebuilt joint. I didn't fully rebuild it because I didn't completely clean it and do all of that, but you get the picture. They're stupid simple to rebuild. I've done them on the trail. I did one in the Golden Crack at Moab. <laughs> one, I was being lazy. I didn't feel like crawling under the Jeep, so I rearranged the Jeep, put the Jeep over the crack, jumped down in the crack, pulled the arm out, tightened the joint back up, put it back together, and off to the races we went. I mean, we we. They're easy to rebuild. You don't need a press. You don't need any fancy tools. Well, you, do, you need one fancy tool without <laughs> that spanner wrench, you're hosed. But Jolene, go like this. La, la, la. I've done it with a punch in the field, only in the field, in emergency. Get a spanner tool, put one in your toolbox. She makes large, medium, small. If you're going to run our suspension, you need all three because we use all three size joints. All right, enough rambling about that. Let's look at a really old, one of my old Jeeps. Um, Some nostalgia. Yeah, this, uh, Mary and I went and picked this up last night from uh, uh, Army fella down at Fort Carson in Colorado Springs. Um, it has made its way down there. Glad to see a vet still has it. Um, him and his wife, um, he's currently deployed. So we met with the wife last night to pick this up, load it up on trailer, brought it up. Um, just here to give it a once over. Um, they've had it to uh, other shop and the other shop basically didn't know what they were looking at because it's all TNT parts. So they called him said would we look at look it over and make sure it's safe for mom and baby to drive while hubby's over in sandland <coughs> we said absolutely so mary and i drove down last night in a snowstorm and loaded her down the trailer and brought her up here so to clarify this is your old jeep yeah this, this is I, actually your old jeep yep this um, is one of your builds for some that may or may not recognize it since it's left my control <laughs> It has gotten Raptor lined. <laughs> it used to be a really nice silver paint job. Um, but other than that, for the most part, it's still the same old Jeep. Uh, I see we put some new rubber on it. It's got some Falcon Wild Peaks on it. Um, it had a, it probably technically needed rubber when I got rid of it. So I'm not surprised to see that it has new rubber on it. 
Um, we'll just start front to rear. The really only thing that's changed since I've had it, from what I see so far, tires. Um, somebody put a different bumper on it. it used to have our Rock Runner front bumper. Um, and the Raptor liner. Other than that, it's the uh, same old XJ. It's a 2000. Um, we bought it. Actually, one of my employees that used to work for us bought it, and then him and I did some horse trading, and I ended up with it. And then we built it mainly to develop the coil conversion for the rear. That was the main reason I ended up with this Jeep, was to develop all of that. Uh, I was telling Chuck and Mason here a little while ago, it has wheeled all the trails at Hump and Pump, everything at St. George, everything in Moab, including Pritchett. We drove Pritchett drinking a cup of coffee. Um, been Triple Threat, been, well, all, the, all the big trails, all the little trails. It's done, we've had it, Mary and I took it back east. We've wheeled it in West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, um, this Jeep's been around. Um, Tom Yash just said the first time he wheeled with you was in this Jeep. Yep. A lot of people that really got to know us got to meet us with this Jeep. It's been out to King of Hammers. Um, we did... I'm not that familiar with the Hammers trails, but whatever. We did a bunch of trails out there while we were out there for race week. Um, it's just been everywhere. Safe to say it works. Yeah driven it we drive it to and from they're the couple that has it now it's one it's their daily driver so they just wanted to get some maintenance on it and get some eyes on it that actually knew what they were looking at so we'll give it a complete once over front to rear top to bottom um, but let's go back and show the cool part i want to show you the coil conversion then i really want to show you the cool part i'll set it on the floor <laughs> Um, so for most of the, the world that runs in the XJ circles, you're familiar with our Y-Link and our belly pan system. Nothing out of the ordinary there. There's thousands of them running around the country. If you want to take your Cherokee to the next level, um, you keep that, right? There's a skid plate that's normally right here. That's your transfer case skid. So you take your transfer case skid off, set it aside, and then we start building out the coil conversion off of the Y-Link pan. It's pretty straightforward. This piece bolts in where the skid place used to was, then the suspension cross member then bolts to it, which locates it. You drill two holes here in your frame, four holes, two on each side. And we send you a threaded insert that has to be put in the frame so that you can bolt this cross member in place. So now you've got your four link cross member. It's a dual triangulated four link, just like everything else we do. Once this is home, then you can start assembling all your control arms in your rear axle. This one I swapped in a Ford 88. Um, oh, now you're testing my memory. I think this one had a Dana 35 in it stock. <coughs> Obviously, these are 37 inch tires. Those two do not work. So, we, we got an 88 out of an Explorer, re geared it, air bead. It's got a um, C, C clip eliminator kit in it. Um, I don't remember whose axle shafts I used way back when. Um, but whatever, it's got a set of hardened shafts in it. So, the rear. If you're questionable currently on your rear end, now is the time to upgrade because you got to weld all of these brackets on to your axle to get this coil conversion in. So you might as well kill two birds with one stone. Um, so we upgraded to the 88, put the coil conversion in. Just like everything else we build, the truss locates off of your center section. We have the truss for Dana 35, if that's really what you want to do. Uh, Dana 44, 88, 8 and a quarter. Dana 60, 14 bolt, you name it. We've got a truss system that fits that axle. It locks over 
The truss is cut to the right length, so you put your lower control arm mounts on, just like all our other stuff, buttered up to the end of the truss, and lo and behold, your lower control arm mounts are in the right place. Um, the upper link mounts are already welded on center of the truss for you, so you just gotta drop that in. Um, on this coil conversion truss, it is a little different than most of our trusses. I don't know if Mason can see it or not, but the coil buckets are already built into the truss. Yeah. Puts them on the right alignment, right? They're stretchable. This Jeep's got about an inch of stretch in it. And the main reason I did that, I ran out of room cutting on the leading edge of the wheel well. I had room I could cut to the rear. So we had to stretch the wheel base a touch. Um, the chassis side of the coil conversion, everything bolts in. You can see these, I don't know Mason can see them or not. There's two bolts here, same on that side. That's where your factory sway bar was. So you take the sway bar out of it, these brackets bolt in where, the, where them holes were. That starts building out your entire upper coil mount assembly. So with them bolted here, it's kind of a funky bracket. When it bolts in here, you actually, the coil mount is part of it. And it's probably really tough to see, but there's some bolts buried back up in here. Then this cross member bolts in between your two coil buckets. You get everything lined up to where it fits nice, tighten all the bolts down. You now have upper coil buckets. Um, it's a really simple, easy conversion. I mean, the only real measuring is, is figuring out where your pinion angle goes. So when we do one of these, we've done enough of them now, we kind of know what we're doing. But if you're doing one of these for the first time, you tack all your brackets in, set it on the ground. Figure out where your pinion angle needs to be. Maybe you got it right, maybe you didn't. If you didn't, cut your tacks, roll the diff in the truss, smoker home, put some paint on it, bolt it all together. So even though it's a complicated definitely coil and uh, switch over it's not we took all the rocket science out yeah of it. Uh, everything which is pretty typical of all of our suspension I tried to take all of the the smart work no mm -hmm. offense no, no. out of the project so that you could do it at home and stand a good chance of putting your Jeep back together and not having to come get it with a roll back and take it to a shop because it's too hard right on. so um, the main reason for the coil conversion, A is flex. This thing flex like, flexes like a monster. It, we were discussing off camera. Um, it surprised quite a few JKs in its day. Um, where, where it would go and what, it, what I was capable of doing trail-wise. All the hard stuff in South Dakota. Um, the main reason I retired it is, well, it's a unibody. She's got some squeaks in it and I couldn't and it. It's got a spot weld in it somewhere that's come apart. <laughs> it makes me insane. And we really needed to move on and develop more JK parts and our, you know, we were really wheeling this Jeep in places an XJ shouldn't be. There's a lot of sheet metal and a lot of glass. Mm -hmm. um, and for most of you that are still playing with XJs, understand they are not the easiest thing to come by anymore. Clean ones. This one's still pretty clean other than that one spot weld I could never find. <coughs> but the main point in doing the coil conversion is back here. And oh yeah you can still see it. See the little foo bar in the paint right there in mm -hmm. the corner of the window? That's right. Mm -hmm. There's a little like a flake almost right yeah. right there Okay, that part of the tub on an XJ will buckle and the reason that buckles is your leaf spring In shackle, that's your shackle pocket. The leaf spring is normally right here and the shackle is here When you articulate all that force is pushed into this corner which translates to that corner and things go clunk Doing the coil conversion, all of that's gone. This Jeep completely crossed 
this side on bump, front driver completely on bump, maybe even floating a wheel. You can stop, shut the Jeep off, come back here and go, I think I need a sandwich and go chunk and the hatch opens. No longer translating Every force. time. It doesn't move all that force into the back of the body. Nice. Um, so that's really the technical reason for doing the coil conversion, that and drivability. Now you have complete adjustable rear suspension. Um, you can play with wheelbase a little bit. You can adjust pinion angle without having to cut spring perches off and re-weld them on or put a wedge in or whatever, what have you. How adjusting pinion angle on a leaf spring vehicle is not easy. Is this every cha chassis stiffener? Yeah, as well? full chassis stiffener. So the upper coil bucket, and everything's, this Jeep's yeah, been out of my care for a while, so things are kind of rusty. Um, that kind of in itself acts as a chassis stiffener. Mm -hmm. There's a flange. It's hard, hard to see because there's everything in the way, but there's a, a horizontal flange here. You can see it right there. Yeah. So that bolts in. You got to take the seat out. You got to take the carpeting out. This will bolt in here. It bolts in here. Okay. So that kind of acts as a ch chassis stiffener in and of itself. They can be welded in. We just never welded them in. Um, the more you weld on a unibody, the more problems you're going to have. So we left them bolted in. But our standard off-the-shelf chassis stiffeners here, and I think Craig, let me see the light. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Craig's got the lift. That tail is under this lift foot. It comes clear back oh, yeah. to about there. It's There's another tail here that locks into the um, leaf spring pocket and then this whole piece is your chassis stiffener all the way to this joint so that's your main chassis stiffener we've been making them for 15 years this jeep also has our extension on it so this piece here you can see the seam up and around goes all the way to the coil bucket mm -hmm. there so this is your forward chassis stiffener what we found over the years is if you're abusive to the front end, meaning plowing the bumper into rocks, mm -hmm. we, we used to use the bumper to our advantage, get the bumper up on the rock so you could get the tire to it and up and over you'd go. That, it's a unibody again. So now you're reacting all that force right here in the firewall. Um, you, you could see on some of them that the front clip was actually uphill and buckling. So that's where this stiffener came from here is to reinforce the firewall. <coughs> As you were probably noticing back in here, this isn't quite stock. <laughs> um, we had to do a lot of sheet metal work back in these corners to get the 37s to fit. And I'll show you that here in a minute. The last piece I want to talk about before we put it on the floor is our inner fender panels. Um, normally on an XJ, and I don't have my tape list, so I'm going to see if I can reach it. This drops way down in here. There's a hump where the battery pocket is on this side, and on that side is the hump where the airbox pocket is. This inner fender panel takes all of that out. I'm going to do some rearranging under the hood, um, but that allows you to run 37-inch rubber on this Jeep has four and a half inches of lift. So, Not that familiar with the Falcon tire, we don't run them a lot, but by looking at it, that's a fairly large 37. Um, tires 
we haven't cycled it, um, but it used to all in 37s. We had 37 inch Bio Goodriches on it, and they fit completely full lock steering, full articulation, everything. Um, some of you, if you're really paying attention, may have noticed the sway lock on the front of this. Um, we were the first ones to put a sway lock on an XJ. And now I think Steve actually has a kit for doing that. Um, you know, our, our Adventure Series sliders, those we still sell quite a few of. They're a, a two-piece design. The mounting feet go on the chassis, and then they bolt to the pinch seam. Those in, the, in and of themselves act as a chassis stiffener on an XJ. Plus, they give you a nice wide step to get in and out of. Um, this Jeep used to have a roof rack on it. We had roof top 10 on it for a while. Um, make a great place to stand so you can get stuff off your roof rack. Although this one's short enough, you can reach whatever's on your roof rack. Unless, unless you're Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> this guy. Um, so not only is your system fairly easy to switch over to coils, not the end of the world, but all of that in itself will help strengthen the XJ at right. the same time. Make it live. I mean, the, I and that's the worst part about these is when you start doing this, yeah. it really does take a toll on them. It's hard on the unibody. And so if you can do that while making it stronger, right. and if you've ever driven one that has everything suspension wise dialed into where it's actually forcing that down and not in the unibody, it's a, it's a different feeling in the XJ. It's weird not to feel it all crunching yeah, up. Yeah, you guys had one out at Adams and mm -hmm. it's all linked out. Yep. So. Well, somebody, somebody totaled that. I don't remember who it was, but... Yeah, some bearded guy I heard. <laughs> so, Love you, James. But they're, uh, you know, like I said, this Jeep has surprised a lot of people um, over the years. And it's kind of nice to see it back in the stable for a, for a day or two anyway. Yeah. Um, so we'll get her fixed up and uh, get her back down there. Thanks for the service the guy that's currently owns it's overseas so um mary and i are kind of going to take care of this um, as a little christmas present to him and his family so we'll go through and do the maintenance and tidy it all up and take it back down to them so they got it for the holidays and uh, speaking of holidays next tnt tuesday is christmas eve we're going to have a special edition um and then the following Tuesday is New Year's Eve day, also a special edition. Mm -hmm. um, for you, those of you that are keeping score, we're closing at noon on Christmas Eve. We're obviously closed Christmas Day. We're closed at noon on New Year's Eve day. Uh, that will be our Christmas party, a couple days late, but it's all we could work out with schedules. Um, so we'll be closing at noon and then have a special edition at our Christmas party um, on New Year's Eve day, New Year's Eve day, correct? Mm -hmm. And then New Year's Day we are closed. And then Thursday we're back up and running, hitting 2020 hard, fast, hard. and furious. Yes. Um, Speaking of 2020, we did put out the dates for Last Man Standing. <coughs> um, a couple of you have been interested and sent us emails to the sales at TNT Customs. Today, we will be sending out your prequel letter, if you will, right. let you know what's going on, and we'll also attach an application, and also stand by and look out for our Terrain Master program that we'll also be unveiling, hopefully this week, with applications and the full information. So, a bunch of TNT stuff coming at you real quick, right. even though we got short weeks coming up for the holidays. Yeah. So and then next thing up after that is Chuck and Mason will be at Winter in the Rocks in St. George. Awesome event. If you uh, haven't attended, you've been there quite a yeah, few times. I've been there. Time. The weather is kind of iffy, but other than that, the event is flipping awesome. It's one of the favorite events of the year and some of the favorite wheeling around the year. So if you see us, we will be sponsoring a trail um, and TNT will be out there in full force. So. We still have a few spots in the Jeep shop schedule for those Oop. of you thinking about Jeep Safari and winter projects wanting them done for spring. Need to get out as quickly. Probably call us sooner than later. Um, 
we only have one or two slots open, and uh, EGS is coming up real right. quick. And yeah, you guys have your own Jeeps to get yeah, ready. We've got, got a lot of work to do on that. So, yeah, if you're looking at EGS, you need to get at me pretty quick, even if you need parts. Uh, that's going to come up quicker than you even think. Right. So keep that in mind if you're looking to do something big before uh, EGS. Other than that, that's all I have. Yeah, that's all we got for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next week. Get ready for Christmas. <laughs> yeah.